everyone! Welcome to my channel! Today, I will talk about Hoyas again. I will show you plants with beautiful silver variegation on their leaves. They are also called splashes. And now, I present to you my old Hoya, Hoya Weibergiai. I have mentioned it before in a review, a long time ago, and I called it temperamental. It truly was temperamental for me for several years. I couldn't find a way to connect with it. This happened because I couldn't find a suitable spot where it would feel good. I decided to grow it on the windowsill, with natural lighting, but it didn't work for it at all. The leaves it tried to grow were small, twisted, and often fell off. In general, although there were no direct sunlight rays, natural lighting didn't suit it. I even thought about getting rid of it because, seemingly, the plant was beautiful and its cuttings thrived in other homes, but I had this problem. The final solution was to place it under a lamp, although mature plants are usually not grown under lamps due to limited space. But I still put it next to the shelf, and a miracle happened. It liked it, and it started growing normal leaves that don't fall off and reach a normal leaves that don't fall off and reach a normal size. Now everything is fine with it. From this, I concluded that in my conditions, Hoya Wibergei grows well only with artificial lighting. Natural lighting doesn't suit it. This is just my observation. I don't know. Maybe in other homes, under different conditions, it grows well on a windowsill. That's how it is with me. As you can see, the young leaves have turned pink. I didn't plan for it. It just started growing vigorously and reaching toward the lamp. It's truly a beautiful Hoya. Maybe for someone, it grows well with natural lighting. Please tell me. I'm very interested, or maybe it's just temperamental with me. Now everything is fine, but I won't put it on the windowsill anymore, of course. And this is Hoya Epsa 997. It also didn't like growing on the windowsill with bright lighting. More precisely, it liked it but I didn't like the leaves it started producing. They were large, but almost without silver variegation, without spots. I had to change the growing conditions. I also placed it under a lamp, and here's the result. The leaves became beautiful with spots. Of course, it's not as vibrant as this variety usually is, but I like it because plain green leaves are not very attractive. I prefer more pronounced silver spots. This variety is fast growing and undemanding. I hope now it will grow according to its variety, because I have found suitable conditions for it. By the way, I have already mentioned that the lamp under which my Hoyas are placed is weak. It has a power of 18 watts, and even though they are grouped together, meaning each Hoya doesn't receive much light, because not all of my Hoyas are under the lamp. Nevertheless, artificial lighting turned out to be better for them. This variety surprised me with its large leaves. It's a variety called Crassopedia Lata Splash from Vietnam. When I bought the cutting, the leaves were small, about this size. I thought it was a regular, small-leaved Hoya. However, when it started growing, the leaves got bigger and became large. I was surprised by this and instead of a small leaved Hoya, I got a beautiful medium-sized Hoya with stunning coloration.
Another surprise for me was the cutting from this Hoya. I planted it and noticed that it started developing a tan. However, its tan looks unusual, not like Hoya Wybergia, where the silver parts of the leaf turn pink. Here it looks like random paint splatter. Despite this, the variety is very beautiful and impressive. It grows quickly, is undemanding, and forms many branches. This is also good because I am often asked how I shape my plants. Hoyas are vines. They tend to climb and crawl in different directions. Some Hoya varieties differ from small, leaved Hoyas and have a bushy form. In this video, we won't talk about bushy forms. We'll focus on trailing Hoya varieties that tend to crawl and climb. Some of them even start branching on their own, producing shoots from multiple growth points. Of course, I won't plant multiple cuttings in one pot because I would need a huge pot for that. However, if it's a variety that doesn't branch on its own, I can comfortably plant multiple cuttings in one pot. You can also plant Hoyas that require similar growing conditions together. For example, two small-leaved Hoyas can be planted together. In my case, I have Hoya Hushkiliana variegata and Hoya Hualimiana variegata growing together. You can also plant Hoyas of the same variety but different colorations. For example, Hoya Macrophylla variegata and Hoya Macrophylla pot of gold. It will not only be beautiful, but also save space. Now, let's move on to the next beauties. This Hoya is a newcomer to my collection. It's called Hoya Mitrata Splash. When I saw photos of it, it didn't impress me much. But then I saw the green border on the leaves from a foreign blogger, and I really liked it. When I saw this Hoya in person, I realized that I chose the right variety that I needed. It looks truly stunning. Because of the green border, the leaves appear three-dimensional. It gives the impression that there's neon lighting shining from beneath them. Overall, it's a striking Hoya with silver speckles that add uniqueness. It grows quickly and surprises me with its speed. It started developing right away. By the way, I won't plant multiple cuttings in one pot for Hoya Mitrata. This variety prefers to form clusters. It starts with short internodes and then produces long shoots, so one cutting will be enough. Yes, it's time to repot this plant, but I'm still afraid. Currently, I'm watering them so actively because of the heat that I'm afraid of overwatering them. For now, I'm managing by watering it from this cup, starting to fertilize it a bit. But soon I will have to repot it. I'm still apprehensive about it. It's such a beauty. As for this Hoya Crassa Petiolata, it's also getting too much light. I noticed that the leaves turned like this. They didn't just get sunburned, they got scorched. It's certainly not good for the plant, but after that normal leaves started growing, so everything is fine. Another variety that I've had for a long time 
is Cayudata Splash or Cayudata Silver. It surprised me when I placed the cutting under the lamp. The leaves showed their true coloration. These silver speckles became so vibrant and the leaves started to blush. But most importantly, it's these silver markings. This splash became very vivid and Hoya Kodeda revealed itself. The leaves are dense, beautiful. Overall, it's a magnificent variety, simply stunning. The mother plant always grew under natural lighting, but it wasn't this beautiful. Tiny silver speckles. It looked nice and good. But when I placed it under the lamp, it became even more beautiful. From this, I concluded that splash variety should be grown under the lamp for as long as possible. It seems they prefer it there. Of course, there are some that grow fine under natural lighting, like Hoya pubicolix that I showed you. It always stays on the windowsill. I've never put it anywhere else. There's a corner where it doesn't even fit. But that probably only applies to it. All the other varieties are under the lamp. Although they can grow well on the windowsill, observations show that the most beautiful leaves and variegation are achieved under at least a weak lamp. This Hoya is also quite new in my collection. It's still small and cannot fully showcase its beauty yet, but I still want to capture it while it's small and then show it when it grows. This is Hoya undulata, as they call it, Hoya undulata with round leaves. It's much more beautiful than it appears on camera. Its leaves are soft, fluffy, you could say. Very pleasant to touch. And it has a two-tone variegation on the leaves. Silvery and somewhat grayish, you could say. Because of this, the speckles appear three-dimensional. Overall, it's a promising and beautiful Hoya. I've seen what the mature plant looks like, and I really liked it, so I think mine will become just as beautiful. Although, right now it's very small, but it has started small, but it has started growing quickly. So I hope that soon I'll have something to show. It's so beautiful, and my most vibrant new addition is Hoya Svetlana. It surprised me because I didn't expect the leaves to be so beautiful. These are the leaves from which I took the cutting. They are lighter and the coloration is not as pronounced. I mean specifically the splash, specifically the silvery evasion. Of course there are others, but they don't look the same way. But when I saw these gorgeous leaves, it was really beautiful. I never used to like Hoya Svetlana before. I have Hoya Bahoy. I thought it couldn't interest me. And here it is such beauty. Yes, this variety is very striking. It also started growing quickly for me. But for now, it's still very small. I can't say anything about its finickiness and what will happen next. But for now, it has very beautiful leaves. They are dense and resemble cardboard, very sturdy. I'm afraid to water it too much because the leaves are dense, so as not to overwater it. Such beauty. I wanted to show you these Hoyas today. I think I answered the question about forming clusters. But I'll repeat again that there are varieties that branch out on their own. They can branch out by themselves, so there's no point. 
for example, in rooting this Hoya crassipiciolata that I mentioned earlier. There are Hoyas that have short internodes, and in that case, it also doesn't make sense to root another cutting because the leaves will obstruct each other. But there are varieties that, of course, can and should be planted with multiple cuttings in one pot because it will be both beautiful and space-saving. This is most commonly done with Hoyas that have small leaves. Then they look more fluffy, and the cluster becomes more beautiful. Next time, maybe I'll show you how my plants are growing. I've already shown how my variegated Hoya Walliniana plants are growing. The only thing to consider when planting different varieties in one pot is to choose plants that have similar care requirements. <laughs>